Dear friends, today I have a beautiful question from Sequences. Meanwhile, Hippo has a message for you. It's asking you to subscribe. So, AN is a bounded sequence, which implies that it's a real sequence that satisfies the following condition. For every epsilon positive, there is a natural number n, such that for all indices bigger than n, a n minus a m, which comes later than a n, is less than epsilon. Prove that a n is convergent, in fact. Wow, what is surprising about this question? If we had the absolute value here, then this would be a famous theorem that all of we know. If you have a Cauchy sequence, then you have a convergent sequence in R. And this question is saying that actually a weaker condition is sufficient to conclude convergence. So another way of interpreting this condition is that if your AN is, say, at this level, if this is your AN, then the future ones, AMs, will not drop all the way down uh, say to here, then this would be a huge gap. A n minus a m will be really big. So the the true a m would be somewhere here, so that there is only a tiny drop down here. So this is about the drop. This quantity is just how much the sequence drops down. There is a bound on how far it can drop. However, the surprising part is that there is no control on how far it can jump. So also, the, the AM could occur anywhere above here because then AN minus AM would be negative and would be less than epsilon anyway. So technically, AM could be anywhere it wishes higher than AN, but the only restriction we have is that it just doesn't drop too much down. So this is blocked region uh, but anything above that is fine. So again, the question is quite surprising and we are ultimately asked to prove that indeed the sequence converges. So I want to begin my solution by observing that because I have a bounded sequence, uh, I actually have the limb sup and limb inf. Okay, so let alpha be set to be the limb sup of a n. I don't want to write n goes to infinity. Everybody knows that. Beta is limb inf of a n. Because these limits always exist, but they could sometimes be infinity, but the boundedness of sequence implies that, so by assumptions, we know a n is bounded. Alpha and beta are finite of values, which means they are not plus, mine, plus infinity or negative infinity. Okay. Let, uh, we, we know in general, that the limb inf is less than or equal to alpha. To prove a n is convergent, we must show that indeed alpha equals beta. So no doubt about that. So how am I going to prove this? So suppose to the contrary that D equal alpha minus beta is not zero, which ma makes it strictly positive. And we're going to reach a contradiction. Okay, what it tells you is the following then. Um, given any n natural number, because alpha is limb sup, the sequence keeps visiting it. And because beta is limb inf, 
the sequence keeps visiting that as well on some other indices. But anyway, it is true that there exists n in natural numbers such that n is bigger than n and at the same time the distance of a n to alpha is less than d over 5. So this a n is among those indices that visit your limb sup alpha. Now that uh, fix one such n, fix one such n and find, which is again possible because your sequence will visit your limit even after this particular a little n. So m in natural numbers such that m is bigger than n and a m minus beta is less than d over 3. So actually it would work with 5 as well, but 3 is probably close to being optimal. So let me do d3 in both. Um, if I draw a line, everything will be clear here. So here is your alpha, here is your beta, their distance is d. Now you know that your a n is somewhere pretty close to alpha. So your a n little a n is somewhere there. And you know that your a m is somewhere here. So somewhere here is your a m and somewhere inside the green range is your a n. Um, of course, you can do this algebraically, just open up these uh, absolute values, but this is just super clear. As a result, your, how, how tiny or how big can a n minus a m be? So the smallest that this can get is when you hit the extremes in both these cases, like the closest that green gets to the yellow. And that is, I claim, is d over 3. So if you don't believe me, again, um, go and compute this. But actually, it will look nicer if I do it this way, because then I will make a point about this. So we succeeded. So let's see what happened. You give me this capital N, and I succeed in finding two indices, little n and little m, um, such that a n minus a m is bigger than d over 3. But this is a contradiction, but this is a contradiction. If we take epsilon to be d over 3, then we are in trouble because for d over 3, for this epsilon, no matter how hard you try, so let's for the completeness just emphasize here, for this epsilon, which is positive, there would be, there would be no n satisfying the condition of the, uh, on the sequence. Because again, you give me this capital N and I just showed you how I find two indices uh, where the distance, which was supposed to be less than epsilon is actually bigger than epsilon. And that hits a contradiction and all started because we supposed that D was a positive value. Um, so the, the result is that D indeed must be zero, which of course implies alpha equals beta and the rest of the story. And that's the end. So friends, we kind of have proving the following that if some sequence is 50% cushy, then it's actually 100% convergent.
Um, it's just amazing because we had no restrictive assumptions on our sequence like monotonicity or anything like that. And it's just uh, nice to see that it goes through. Have a great day. Hope to see you in future.